Hello and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here then hi my name's Zoe please make sure you hit that subscribe button and also turn on that bell so you're notified every single time that I post. I do usually do true crime videos but today's video is a little different. If you are following my Instagram you will already be aware that I am currently moving house so that means I am unable to sit down, research and film a true crime video but I have got other bits of content coming your way over the next week whilst I get settled in and stuff. I'm currently still in my old place but my bed's not even on a frame because we're going through a lot at the minute trying to sort out moving but hopefully the schedule will be back to its normal self in a week or so and I'll be back to posting videos. Due to all the hassle and stuff I have decided that I am not going to be doing a full week of Halloween videos this year. What I'm going to do instead is from now till the end of October every true crime video that I post will be surrounding Halloween so it gives you that Halloween element and I am so sorry that I'm not able to go through with doing the full week of videos. I've just got so much going on at the moment that I just can't give the cases the time that I need to give them and I just can't get it successful if you know what I mean but I have some big things planned for Christmas because by the time Christmas comes around I'll be all settled in so make sure you stay tuned for that. So today is Friday the 11th of October and yesterday was actually World Mental Health Day so today I decided to sit down and tell you my mental health story. Now yesterday I actually watched Marie Rose, I'm sure her name is, video on this. I will leave her video link down below and it sort of inspired me to do the same with my own mental health story. As my OG subscribers are aware I've talked about mental health on this channel before and I believe that mental health should be talked about any day of the year and I will always talk about it, I talk about it on my socials. I am actually part of a mental health group on Facebook which has got thousands of people going through mental health who all post in there and support each other and the group is totally private, everybody's absolutely lovely in there. I will leave that link down below if you are interested in maybe joining that group and getting some sort of support. So my mental health story probably starts when I was very very young and I don't remember having mental health issues as such but looking back on my childhood and how I felt and th the things that I remember it is quite obvious that I probably did have some sort of mental health problems. Now when I was younger I had a toxic upbringing, I didn't have the perfect laugh uh, and I don't expect sympathy in the comments for this at all, I've been through it, I'm through the other end of that now. I've done it, do you know what I mean? But when I was younger my dad was actually abusive and he was an alcoholic. My mum was working full time to try and bring in as much money as possible to obviously to raise me and my two sisters. And as the years went on I found myself that I was caring for my sisters more whilst my mum was working full time. My dad was just spending his days drinking. Eventually the marriage did break down which obviously affected me and both my sisters as well. A marriage breakdown affects children a lot because they know what's going on, they are feeling your emotions, they are feeling their own emotions and sometimes in a marriage breakdown no one actually turns around to the child and says are you okay? What are you going through? When I really think that children in that situation need as much support as possible. They need someone to sit with them and explain what's happening and give them a better understanding of what's going on because from a child's point of view that is seeing parents bickering and parents fighting over the children it's just not nice and it makes you feel bad it makes you feel like are you loved and in the long term that does have an effect on your mental health. I was going through a lot as a child and as I got older that turned into anger and that anger was against everyone but again, I think that falls under my mental health. I was treating everyone quite badly, not to lie. And when I was in school, I was rebellious and I would kick off with absolutely everybody over everything. I messed up my education because of all of this because the things that went on in my younger life really did affect me as I got older. Also, going through school, I did find myself having eating problems. Now, I'm not sitting here saying I've got an eating disorder because... I was never ever diagnosed with anything but my weight would fluctuate 
like one year I would be one of the bigger girls in school then the next year I would be one of the skinnier girls in school and looking back on pictures I have got pictures of these different years and the transition between each year is just absolutely crazy I just wish that I had somebody when I was a child as a child more like teenager turn around to me and just ask if I was okay because maybe that anger would have gone that fear because I definitely had fear when you've been abused by a parent you definitely have fear of all other adults you don't know who to trust I think someone asking me if I was okay when I was younger would have definitely benefited me also in school I was bullied for the way that I looked which again affected my eating sometimes I would be totally aware of the fact that I wasn't eating and I'd be doing it on purpose looking back on it now I can remember myself purposely not eating and going a full day until I got home without anything to eat because I thought if I ate I would just be fat and then that gives more people a reason to bully me which is wrong I shouldn't have to think like that but I definitely thought like that so the people were bullying me for the way that I look, for the fact that my family didn't have a lot of money, for the fact that my parents wasn't together, that was another reason why people bullied me and things like that. But things definitely did start to get better when I left school. I think when you leave school, you do grow up and you totally change. You move on to new things. I wasn't getting bullied anymore. I was older, so I wasn't as angry against my parents as I was when I was younger so then in turn I sort of did feel better I made new friends at college I even got myself a boyfriend so all in all around 2012 I was feeling great thinking back on it now probably that period of time is probably the best I've felt in my whole life and I haven't felt like that again yet I hope one day I do feel like that again but I'm not sure that I will. So in 2012, I met my first boyfriend and we went to college together. Things were really, really great. We moved in together and I was with him for, I'd say about three years, up until 2015. Now in 2015, I found out I was pregnant with him and I lost his child. Now I'm not gonna go into much detail about that because I have already got a video on that that I'll leave linked down below. I don't really want to talk about it because it does affect me and at the time it really did affect me as well. This miscarriage caused me to have severe anxiety. I wouldn't want to leave the house. I was just angry at everybody else. I didn't understand why this had happened to me. I pushed him away. I fell out of love with him and we broken up. And I found out that he had actually been talking to his ex-girlfriend, which made me feel even more insecure. So all these feelings together and just given the whole situation, we decided that it was just best to leave each other and be single and be on our own. And I will admittedly say, being on my own was one of the worst things ever. Living on my own, being in a flat on my own, I just didn't look after myself, I wasn't eating, I wasn't putting the heating on, I wasn't doing anything to look after myself or have any sort of self care. I really neglected myself and I didn't notice this, it was people around me who actually started to notice this. I was going out every weekend and getting drunk, spending all my money on alcohol and just not looking after myself and I've said that a few times but that's basically what it is your basic needs that you need every single day I wasn't doing that and then I met my current boyfriend now we were just friends at first and he kind of got me out my shell and got me out my bubble and made me feel a lot better about myself and then over time we got together so we got together in 2016 I think We'd known each other around a year before actually getting together, but it was amazing. We moved in quickly with each other, but it didn't seem wrong, it seemed right. And looking back on it now, after being with him for three years, it definitely was the right decision. We went on holidays together and my mental health definitely did improve. I'd gone from an anxiety riddled person not wanting to leave the flat and just getting drunk all the time to actually doing things and getting a job and working full time and having all these achievements behind me 
things were really really great and things got even better when I found out I was pregnant with my son as well. Now I never really wanted kids but then finding out I was pregnant and being pregnant was absolutely amazing and knowing that I was going to have a child literally changed my life. Honestly it changed my life in that one second of just finding out because I had to grow up and be a mother. I had to look and raise after this child. It was one of the best times of my life, honestly. And if I could go back and do it again, I would. Like, being able to raise this child properly and not like my parents raised me, and I'm, I don't mean that to be totally horrible, but I was brought up, like I said, in a toxic place. And I definitely don't want my child to grow up in that and I'm glad that he isn't growing up in that and I'm doing the best I can to make sure he grows up properly. So having that chance literally meant the world to me. Now my pregnancy was absolutely fine apart from sickness and I have a full labour and delivery story that I will leave linked down below with the rest of the stuff. But in May 2018 I gave birth to my son. Now the labour was very traumatic in my opinion it might not seem traumatic to some people's labors but for me especially being my first child it was really really traumatic i totally went downhill with my mental health like at the time i didn't realize that at all i didn't think that at all but now looking back on it i instantly i was not myself i was a totally different person and i don't mean in a good way either i was i was ill and that's the only way I can describe it now. I suppose I still am ill now. I'm not better at all, not at all. I, I have better days, but I'm not better. So at first, I didn't think anything was wrong. I thought I just had some sort of protection over my child, but then it kind of grew and grew and grew. So when you're a mother, naturally you worry about your child. You worry about things happening to your child. But then it comes a point where it takes over your life and every second of your life and you cannot physically function and do normal day-to-day -day tasks without that coming in the way. And when it gets to that point, that's when it is an issue. And that was what was happening for me. I couldn't physically sleep. I was awake 24-7, 24 hours a day. The only time I would sleep was when the baby was with my current boyfriend I didn't trust anybody else around my child. I wouldn't let my mum, my sisters, my partner's mum, anybody near that child. I would not leave my child with that person unless I was there. I could not physically leave my child alone. I was so worried. I generally thought, see this is going to be really hard because I, I don't say these things out loud, but I generally thought that my child was going to die and for some reason my child would get taken away from me and I don't know why to this day that I thought that that was just what my brain was coming up with so for example his cot used to be next to the wardrobe and sometimes we would store things on top of the wardrobe so I would have visions, literally visions and voices telling me that these things are going to fall off the wardrobe and they're going to kill him if I don't do this if I don't make this right, or if I don't take these steps, this is going to happen. And it turns out now that that is basically OCD, so it's obsessive thoughts, and you've got to do obsessive things to stop these obsessive thoughts from happening. It is not nice at all. These thoughts are horrible. It's almost like there's somebody else in the room, and that person is telling you, your child's going to die. I was literally dreaming that my child was going to die so when I would sleep I was having nightmares that my child was dead but they were so believable that I generally woke up with like sweats, feeling sick, like where is my child, like jumping up, like literally what you see in a movie, that is how my life was and it got to a point where one day I literally just packed my stuff and I just up and I just like wanted to leave my child, I didn't know what I was going to do with myself. I think in a way I was probably feeling suicidal but I don't know because I can't really remember that time if you know what I mean it's just it's not really there in my mind it's something that I do block out but I just wanted to leave I thought my child's life was better without me I thought I couldn't physically protect my child my partner knew obviously that 
there was something wrong and he said you need to go and see a doctor you need to mention this to a doctor so I was so reluctant to say anything because I initially thought that social services would think I was unfit and take my child. Now I just want to say to any expectant mothers or mothers out there who are going through something similar, social services will not take your child without good reason. So if you are feeling this way then please go and see a doctor. But a couple of days later it was actually my son's six week checkup and I took him to the checkup and she was checking him over and everything was fine. Then she asked me the one question, are you okay? And I just broke down, instantly just broke down and told her everything. Told her everything I'd been feeling over the past six weeks, told her everything that I had fought over the past six weeks. And she instantly said, this isn't baby blues, this isn't just some way that you're feeling, this is something a little bit more serious. I think you've got postnatal depression and anxiety. So getting that diagnosis was one of the most bittersweet moments of my life. I didn't want that label. I didn't want to have mental health. I don't think anybody does. But to actually have a diagnosis and a reason for my behaviour, that was such a relief to me. And to be finally able to get some help around that, that was great. And knowing that I was walking at that doctor's that day with my child and they didn't take my child just like my fears told me they would was just an overwhelming feeling. So I was given medication and I was taking this medication for nearly a year. I was taking it up until about three months ago and the medication I was on actually causes you to have weight gain. Now this is not with everybody, it's just a side effect that you can have. So if you are on this tablet, then don't just assume you're gonna get weight gain. But for me, the weight gain was a big issue. I had issues with my weight as a child. Being the right weight and stuff is always something that's always stuck to me. So I want to be able to get myself fit and healthy again. And I think them tablets are stopping me from doing that. So I made the decision to stop the tablets. Now, I do not advise anyone to stop their tablets. I always seek doctor's advice. That, I'm, not, I'm not telling you just to go cold turkey or anything. I always seek a doctor's advice. Now I thought I was okay mentally and I was, I was okay mentally but unfortunately as you guys know about a month and a half after stopping these tablets my nan passed away which was a massive kick to me. My nan literally brought me up as a child whilst all this toxicness was going on in my life, the one key figure in my life was my nan. She brought us up, she would take us to school, she would feed us and to lose that person in your life is absolutely heartbreaking. It's just so horrible and to be at someone's bedside whilst they're passing away is horrible as well and that in itself does take a toll on your mental health. I think this has put me back because during the time of being on my medication I became happy again, I could feel again, I could look after my child, the thoughts stopped. But again, them thoughts have started to come back. Now, they're not as bad as they are. I still get real bad anxiety over certain things. But I think I'm gonna go back to the GP and get back on the tablets again. Now, I know I don't want the weight gain, but I'm not gonna lose weight and be healthy if my mind's not healthy as well. I need to be in the right place in my mind too. So once I get my mind in the right place, then yeah, I can go on and move on with other sections in my life. So at the moment, I am okay, basically. I'm not great, I'm not bad, I'm just okay for now. And I think that's how it'll be until I get on some more medication. If you have any suggestions of medication that haven't caused you weight gain or anything like that please let me know down below that would be a great help i do hope one day that i can feel like i did at least before i had my son now i don't regret having my son one bit but obviously the labor and all the trauma around that has really affected me and i just don't think i'll ever be the same person again as much as i want to be the same person again i don't think i will but i'll I just want to feel happy and have normal emotions again, which hopefully one day that will happen as I continue on my mental health journey. Now that basically is 
my mental health story from being a child to now to 2019 so I hope that maybe in a year's time or two years time I can go over the next two years of a mental health story if that's something you would want to see maybe keep up to date and it'll be good to look back on and see how times have changed. I am so sorry if that's been a little bit rambly as well you know me I can never keep to a same story I sometimes go off on tangents I just can't help it but I hope you found this video somewhat informative. I hope you found out a little bit more about me than you did know before because I know there is a lot of new subscribers. So if you want to know in more detail certain parts of my life, let me know down below and I may talk about it. I'm not sure. I already have some videos made on some certain parts of my life that have already happened that I will leave linked down below so you can go and check them out they are older videos they are bad I'm just making you aware so like I said World Mental Health Day let's make every day World Mental Health Day if you know somebody who's struggling or even if they seem fine just ask them are they okay because asking somebody are they okay could actually save somebody's life talking is the best thing so let's all get talking and let's all get listening and hopefully we can stamp out stigma around mental health if you did enjoy this video please give it a massive thumbs up hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content from me i normally do true crime videos i will hopefully be back to my usual scheduling if you want to call it that very very soon i literally love you all so much thank you for your support and thank you for listening to my story and i shall see you in my next video bye